This is the Locked On Jets podcast. It is a post-game podcast, a postcast on this Sunday, October 9th, 2022. I'm your host, John B. from GangGreenNation.com, thanking you for making the show your first listen or first watch every day. This podcast is free, and it's available on all platforms, including YouTube. We are here today to break down a Jets victory. The Jets beat the Miami Dolphins 40-17, to Week 5 NFL action. The Jets improved their record to 3-2. and this is the first time they've been over 500 five games into the season since 2017. And this was their first AFC East win since the final week of the 2019 season. So the Jets end a two-year losing streak in the division. They get over 500. In fact, they tie Miami now for second place in the division. And the way I look at it is this. The NFL is a really tough league to win in. And when you have opportunities put in front of you, you have to take advantage of them. And that's what the Jets have done in the first five weeks of this season, because this was the third game where the Jets took on a team with a shaky quarterback situation. Of course, week two against Cleveland, they won the game, but they really did not take advantage of it. The defense had a very rough game. But last week against Mitchell Trubisky and Kenny Pickett, you know, Trubisky, a journeyman veteran who's not that great. Kenny Pickett, a rookie, seeing his first NFL action. And then today, we knew that the Jets would be facing Miami backup quarterback, We just did not know which one because Teddy Bridgewater was slated to start the game, only he got knocked out on the first play as the Jets ran a corner blitz. Sauce Gardner got to Bridgewater. He made a big hit. Bridgewater let the ball go. It was in the end zone. It was not a sack, but uh, the officials called it intentional grounding, so it was a safety. The Jets took an early 2-0 lead, but more significantly, Bridgewater suffered an injury and he would never return. So he was only in for one passing attempt, and into the game came the guy who's really Miami's third string quarterback, he was a guy who I guess was kind of their version of Chris Strebler because he had a big preseason. It's Skylar Thompson. He's a rookie out of Kansas state. And he's a guy who by pretty much any account, if you were watching that game. Now, if you're listening to the CBS announcers at halftime, they're telling you how amazing he's playing as he's at 10 of 16 for 67 yards. I, I don't know what it is. Is it just that like so many Announcers are former quarterbacks, and they don't want to attack players at their position. They're just trying to be nice to a rookie. But I could not get over the stuff you were hearing from the studio show and from the booth about you know, Skylar Thompson was playing. Well, he looked horrible in the first half. He looked like he did not belong on the field. He looked like you'd expect a very late-round pick as a rookie to play. He looked completely overwhelmed. And this is the kind of game you got to take advantage of it when this opportunity presents itself because – You're not going to get many opportunities like this. Winning in the NFL is tough under any circumstances, but it's tough when you don't win games against the third-string quarterback. The Jets had to take care of business. And, you know, there were some moments where it was a little little dicey. The Jets jumped out to a 12-0 lead. They got to 19-7, and then, you know, they had a rough stretch near the end of the second quarter and the third quarter. The run defense was not doing the job. In fact, the Dolphins had a 54-yard field goal attempt to take the lead late in the third quarter, which they missed. And from that point, the Jets kind of took over 21 fourth quarter points and they get the win. And here's the thing. The Jets are three and two. I don't know that they've played that great so far. And that's not a criticism. That's actually kind of a good thing because, you know, they're still feeling their way through this thing. You know, lots of new pieces on both sides of the ball. You know, guys figuring out the scheme, figuring out how to work together. And it's good that you're winning games as you're figuring this stuff out because you would have to think that at some point... This is going to improve. The Jets are really going to play well. You know, I don't think the Jets have really put together a full 60 minutes yet. Yet, however, they're still 3-2, and two, and now they're in business. Now they're in a position to potentially make something happen. You know, in years past, the Jets pretty much had to play perfect football. You know, the 2020 team, even last year, if they did not play perfect football, they were going to get blown out. They needed to play perfect football, and they needed the opponent to play poorly because they were so undermanned through those seasons. As I've said through the early weeks of this year, the talent level's improved. And it's gotten to the point, you remember, you may remember a couple years ago, the Jets lost to a third-string quarterback in a home game, Brett Rippon, against Denver. Today, once Bridgewater went out and you you knew it was going to be Skylar Thompson, you had to feel like this was a game not just the Jets could win. It felt like a game the Jets should win. And that's a very different feeling. The Jets, to their credit, again, you know, it was a little dicey at certain points of this game, and... They missed some opportunities to put the game away early. And, you know, Miami did have a chance to take the lead in the third quarter. But once again, the Jets played a brilliant fourth quarter. The Jets so far this year, I don't know whether it will carry over. I don't know whether playing well in the fourth quarter is a skill. But I think it's clear the Jets have been the best fourth quarter team in the NFL so far this season. 
and they did it once again. They took this game over in the fourth quarter. It was a very good day for the Jets, and it's a good day to be a Jets fan. And one of the reasons it's a good day to be a Jets fan is you're seeing a key player on offense continue to come into his own and perhaps become the featured player on that side of the ball. Ahead here on the Locked On Jets podcast on this Sunday postcast, we're going to talk about the big day Brees Hall had. Well, I certainly hope if you're playing daily fantasy football that you had Brees Hall getting more than 99 receiving yards and more than 96 rushing yards. If you did, then you're in business. And if you play daily fantasy football, let me tell you about prize picks. Here's how it works. You pick two to five players. So pick Brees Hall and pick you know a few other Jets on a day that where they score 40 points. If they score more or less than their prize picks projections, you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. There's no competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. And prize picks offers projections to any sport you want to watch. So now that the Jets game's over, you can turn on the Mets later tonight. There's also NBA, NHL seasons about to begin. There's college football. A few weeks from now, men's and women's college basketball. Other sports, soccer, and my favorite, disc golf. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. They have fast and safe withdrawals, and they are currently operational in over 30 states and in Canada. Download the Prize Picks app or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. And first time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. So if you deposit $100, Prize Picks will match that. They'll give you $100. Don't forget to use promo code locked on to sign up for an instant deposit match of up to $100 with Prize Picks. Well, the Jets won today. You got to celebrate. May I suggest treating yourself to a Built Bar? And if you have not tried Built, Buff, Built Bar Puffs yet, you're depriving yourself of one of life's greatest joys. And there's a new flavor. Are you ready for this? It's delicious, indulgent cookie dough. It's covered in chocolate. Built has done it again. It's all the joys of eating cookie dough without the hassle of making it. Plus, it's only 160 calories with a whopping 15 grams of protein. These are delicious. If you're a cookie dough fan like I am, you've got to try them. And like all Built Bars, it's covered in 100% real chocolate. So not only is it healthy, it's tasty. It's chocolate-covered cookie dough with a light, fluffy ch- texture. It's so good. So go celebrate the Jets' win by going to Built.com and ordering this or any of the other built, delicious Built Bar flavors. And then when you're checking out, use promo code LOCKEDON15 and you'll get 15% off your order. Again, that's promo code LOCKEDON15. It's one word with no space. L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, number one, number five, for 15% off at Built, B-U-I-L-T dot com. This is the Locked On Jets podcast. After a Jets victory on Sunday, they beat the division rival Miami Dolphins 40-17 to at MetLife Stadium. The Jets go to 3-2 and on the 2022 season. I think it's clear the big star of the game, Brees Hall. We talked about it last week. Was last week kind of his breakout game? Well, it was nothing compared to what he did in this game. I said it from the day the Jets drafted him. I felt like by the end of this season, he would be the featured point on offense. And that might be, we might look back on this as the day Brees Hall became that featured piece of the offense because he was magnificent in this game. Almost every drive the Jets had, he was the key player. He set up their first touchdown with a 79-yard reception, got down to the one-yard line. Then, unfortunately for him, Michael Carter scored the touchdown on the next play from one yard out. Brees Hall did all the work getting the Jets into scoring range, and Carter gets gets the glory of the touchdown. Tough break break for Brees, but he made a great catch. Now, the Dolphins busted the coverage, but Brees Hall caught the pass and took it all the way to the one-yard line. He dragged the defender the last 10 to 15 yards of that play. Jets had another touchdown drive. Later in the first half, which, I mean, a lot of it was Brees Hall, a 7-yard run, a 12-yard run, 9-yard run, 5-yard run, back-to-back-to-back-to-back. He was the guy that set up a touchdown that came on a scramble from Zach Wilson. Then, when the Jets put the game away in the fourth quarter, Brees Hall again was front and center. He had another reception. This one went for 21 yards. That took the Jets again down to the 1-yard line, and again, Carter scored from a yard out. So, twice Brees Hall makes a long reception and gets the Jets to the 1-yard line, and then Michael Carter scores the touchdown from 1 yard out. A tough break, but later on in the fourth quarter, Brees Hall finally got his touchdown after Carl lost his strip sack and a Quinton Williams recovery and return to the five. Hall finally punched in the touchdown from five yards out. I mean, Paul's numbers, he almost, he fell just short of going for 100 rushing yards and 100 receiving yards. His final line, 18 carries, 97 yards, and that touchdown, two receptions, 100 yards. It makes life easier on the young quarterback. You don't want Zach Wilson to have to carry the load. You want to be able to depend on something else. And that's something else for the Jets going forward might be Brees Hall because he looked every bit the part of the big play back in this game. Heading into the season, I felt like the Jets wanted 
a good run pass mix where you know they'd be leaning in the run game. I think this is the ratio they wanted. If you look at the end of the at the end of the game, the Jets had 33 rushing attempts and 21 passing attempts. Now, part of this playing from ahead, you want to play from ahead so that you can run the ball. It's tough to it's tough to throw it. Away. It's tough to run it when you're be playing from behind. And the Jets have been playing from behind a lot this season, even in the, in the two prior games that they've won. They've kind of had to abandon the run game because they've been so far behind. Today, they got the run game working behind Brees Hall. And this was, the, I don't think the Jets want, listen, you love a game like last week where Zach Wilson's the hero in the fourth quarter, where he lifts the team up, where he shows signs of potentially being something special down the line. But for a young quarterback like Zach Wilson, the guy who's you know still very much developing, still you know probably the goal is a middle of the pack type quarterback this season, you want to be able to win games depending on something else. You want him to be in you know it's a cliche the game manager role though, where he only has to throw the ball 21 times. Zach's day you know was kind of up and down. At the end of the day though, he did hit some big passes in the fourth quarter to extend a couple of drives. And that's what you want. You don't want the entire thing on Zach Wilson's plate. You want other people to be able to lift him up. And first among them might be Brees Hall. This is the game. You know, maybe this is the game. We thought maybe after the first two weeks, Garrett Wilson would be the go-to guy on the offense. After today, maybe it's Brees Hall. And maybe the Jets finally found that mix that they want where they're going to be able to rely on the run game, take the pressure off Zach Wilson. And then, you know, a few key spots. Zach hit a few clutch passes for us. That's the recipe for success for the Jets this season. Anyway, that's all for our quick post-game podcast. We'll have a full episode tomorrow where we will break this game down more in depth. Enjoy your evening, everybody. If you enjoy this show, please give the show a five-star review if you're listening on a podcast source. Give the episode a big thumbs up if you're watching on YouTube. And subscribe to the show. You'll get notifications as new episodes are posted, so you'll never miss an episode. Enjoy your Sunday night, everybody. And again, we'll be back tomorrow with a fuller game review.